Robert Dallas Montgomery, and today is Tuesday, January 31st, 2017. At this time, let us pause for a moment of silence. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our message for today is about standing up for what is right. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, justice cannot be for one side only. It must be for both. I think every first lady since Eleanor Roosevelt is measured against Eleanor Roosevelt because she did completely transform this role. Anna Eleanor Roosevelt was born in New York City on October 11th, 1884. She was born into a life of privilege, but it was a difficult childhood. When Eleanor was eight years old, her mother died very suddenly. And two years later, her father died of alcoholism. So she was an orphan by the time she was 10 years old. At age 14, Eleanor was sent to a boarding school in London. The experience would be a major turning point in her life. The headmistress of this school, a woman named Marie Suvestra, was actually a radical, a feminist, and she wasn't educating these girls just to go off and get married. She was educating them to be leaders. In 1902, Eleanor met her father's fifth cousin, a young Harvard student named Franklin Roosevelt. He was dashing and handsome and was considered a very good catch for her. Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt fell in love, but Franklin's mother was not very happy about the relationship. She sent Franklin off on a trip to Europe to try and break them up, but of course it didn't work. The couple married on March 17, 1905, in New York City. They had children right away, and six of them. While Franklin was serving as assistant Navy secretary during World War I, a rumor surfaced that he was having an affair with his secretary, Lucy Mercer. Eleanor found love letters from Lucy. She did at one point consider leaving, but that would have ended his political aspirations. In 1921, Franklin Roosevelt contracted infantile paralysis, losing mobility in his legs. Eleanor cared for him and encouraged his return to politics. In an odd way, his inability to get around freed her. She started to get involved in political causes. She got involved with the League of Women Voters. She got involved with the Democratic Party. The great American public has its say at the polls, and the result is a Roosevelt victory of amazing proportion. When Franklin Roosevelt was elected president of the United States in 1933, Eleanor saw the office of first lady as a way to expand on her previous work. The first thing she did was create a way of having a constituency of her own. So she created a role that simply hadn't existed before. Eleanor Roosevelt was criticized pretty heavily by some for her active role in public policy. As First Lady, Eleanor pioneered the use of mass media to communicate directly with the public. By having a women-only press corps, which she did, she was able to reach across the country. Eleanor Roosevelt leveraged mass media as a way to connect with the people at a time when the nation was bleak, literally coming out of the Great Depression. Eleanor Roosevelt further strengthened her legacy in her fight for equal rights during World War II. During the war, she famously went to the Tuskegee Air Base because black officers, they weren't being deployed, and she insisted on going up with one of the African-American pilots, and that after that, they did get deployed. On April 12, 1945, Eleanor Roosevelt's husband died after suffering a stroke early in his fourth term as president. She wasn't there, and she learned sometime afterwards that Lucy Mercer was there. She told reporters after he died, and they said to her, Mrs. Roosevelt, what are you going to do now? She said, the story is over, but of course it wasn't. In the years following the White House, Eleanor Roosevelt remained an active political figure. In 1945, President Truman asked Eleanor to be a delegate to the United Nations General Assembly. Eleanor Roosevelt was very active. She really tried to force the United Nations to take a very hard, strong, active role in combating abuses toward human rights. Eleanor Roosevelt chaired the committee that drafted and passed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. She considered that her greatest achievement. 
Eleanor Roosevelt died at her Manhattan home on November 7, 1962. She was 78. For lunch today, our menu will be steak nuggets or chicken bites, mashed potatoes, green beans, salad, and pears, or a grab and go meal. Congratulations to the 48 potential new initiates who received an invitation to join the Junior Honor Society. Your paperwork and dues are to be returned by Thursday. And save the date, the JHS induction ceremony and reception will be held February 8th at 9 a.m. Current members should see Miss Peoples to sign up to bring food for the reception. Finally, six grade students who were asked to be ushers and act as hostesses should give Miss Peoples your decisions as soon as possible. Wednesday will be a 60-40 day for Winfield City Schools. Schools will be dismissed around 11:45. Enjoy your afternoon off. Now here's a look. Here's a look at WSPN Sports with Ewan and Luke. Welcome back to this session of WSPN. This past Saturday, the varsity boys and girls basketball team traveled to Phillips to take on the Bears. The boys came out with the win, but the girls only lost by two. They will both take on the SCA Patriots tonight starting at 4.30. Also this past Saturday, the Alabama men's basketball team beat the Mississippi State Bulldogs by a score of 71-62. to The Auburn's men's basketball team beat the TCU Horned Frogs by a score of 88-80. to Also in basketball news, the Atlanta Hawks beat the New York Knicks by a score of 142-139 to with four overtimes. The AFC Stars beat the NFC Stars by a score of 20-13 to this past Sunday. The Super Bowl will be played this Sunday, February 5th at 5.30 on Fox. The player of the day is Odell Beckham Jr. He had six receptions and a total of 93 yards. He played for the NFC Stars in the Pro Bowl. That's it for this session of WSPN. Join us again next time. The Crow's Nest would like to wish a very happy birthday today to Ross Bozeman. Enjoy your special day. That's the view from the Crow's Nest. Have, Have a terrific day. Tuesday.